Hello and welcome to another Thoughts video on Dr. Stone Special Episode 3 e I'm going to be going over the summary of the plot, uh, characters, new, old ones, sound, dubbing, subbing, animation, and overall conclusion, story, and what I'm looking forward to next season. And we can get into it. So, Dr. Stone's special episode 3 TV is original creator by Ichiro. It's directed by Matsuhita by TMS Entertainment. <clears throat> TMS Entertainment has directed the, or ha it's a studio for all the first two seasons of Dr. Stone. And same original creator, of course. But a different director for this uh, special episode. But he's also going to be directing, or he's also directed the uh, New World Part One. So that's uh, it's the first time they've changed the director since uh, it's become an animated animation. <clears throat> the story plot summary is. You have they have to sail, of course, from last season. We know they have to sail to South America on the opposite side of the planet from Japan to get to the source of the petrification to say Tsukasa. And so, to do that, they need a captain, a ship, a crew. They intro the uh. Anime. I really like how they do this. They intro the uh, special episode because it's been like two years since the last season, and I don't know why the special episode is the in between from season two and season three. I feel like they should be playing season three, but there is a year to year between special episode, this special episode, and season three. So, but they intro the anime with a play, basically recapping the. Yeah, recapping the events from season one, season two, and these are all the uh, people Sukasa revived, and to get them like hype for this ship building contest. <clears throat> They're all gathered around to learn, or it's between Magma, Yo, and Senku about whose ship they're gonna build to travel the world. Of course, we all know Senku's going to win, and they explain that at the end. Like, why did you hold a contest? We knew who we were going with. But, I'll get to it when I get to it. But, of course, Senku's design wins. He designed this massive ship that can sail across the, uh, on the other side of the world. While Magma designs a actual okay ship for a local, like, going on. But, Yo designs, like, a piece of wood type string. Or like four little pieces of wood tied with string around it, and like just a joke. But it's nice to like see everyone character, see all the characters interact. Of course, Senku design wins. They start building the ship. <clears throat> now they decide they need a captain. Who are they gonna get to? They you they have the reporter lady. Uh, tell them about all these people, leaders to where there are some good. Like sailors, uh, anybody educated about sailing, uh, older type ships. And she says there's this one that is very good at it, but he's just not experienced. Him. Ri Su Yi. He's a rich, or he was a rich kid, come from a rich family. He's collected ships, he's sailed old, old timey ships, and uh, that's, he's probably the best, she says he's probably the best one, or he is the best, but his personality is just something else. We can get into his character, he's going to be the captain of the ship, it's easier for me to say captain than his name, so his, his name is Rusui Nanami, I'm just going to call him captain from now on. Captain, he's like full of himself, boisterous. He's very pretentious, 
I don't, for example, he goes and he discovers, oh, he doesn't discover, they have to use oil or get oil to use for the engine on their ship. Senku's designed this kind of engine to run it, not just for sales, because they know the wood they have isn't great. So they design, they look for oil, and the only way the captain will be the captain is they give him full rights to the oil. And so now they have to pay him for the oil, which he gets the, uh, the dude, the comic maker, the, the manga, from the ending of season two, to make all this money for him. So now he's the richest person in the world with this fake money they make. And Gen Senku, Krom, and all of them have to pay him for the oil and for other things. He basically creates his own little economy that he runs and decides what he wants with. I don't personally like uh, the captain. He's entertaining. He's just not someone I personally think is... Uh, he's not my favorite character. I guess that's a better way of putting it. Because I can see the strengths of his, him. He works really well against Gen and Senku. Because he's very... He is smart about what he does. He understands wind, the ships, all stuff. He is very good at this. He, there's no doubt about that. He is on a level of Senku's knowledge about his very particular craft. Senku's just better overall, but he's very good about this particular kind of stuff and adventuring. Uh, so they have to uh, go find oil that the captain now owns, but the land has changed due to the eruption of volcano. And now they have to make a new map using hot air balloon and uh, they make me map using hot air balloon so they can find oil because they don't know where it is because the lands change so differently uh, they make a hot air balloon Krom, Senku and the captain go up in it and they defeat they get through this storm and that's the end of the episode so it's kind of it's kind of very quick about it of course I went through it very fast so the ones that make, we can almost guess who's going to make it, of course, Zuriha. She makes the, uh, everything needed for the, the hot air balloon. She uses, uh, what is it? She uses grass? Then who comes up with this thing, anyway, they use grass, they twirl it into wine, and they put it together and they keep sewing it. They, uh, Senku makes her loom to make this much easier. Uh, using the money that uh, the captain comes up with, he makes all these people. Of course, Gin's a mastermind at all this, so he uses his, like, money's only good because there's trust that we'll use to find the oil. Yada yada. And he gets all of them to be like, we'll pay you this amount of money. To do all this manual labor that no one really wants to do. So he's basically had a, a very cheap workforce to do all the work to help Yuzuya, to help build the ship, all of that. Uh, Yen's really good at negotiating all of this. So they do a great job of picking all these people or paying all these people to work. Uh, he also gets, they also make a business, basically, of like, oh, Yuzuya makes clothes. Again, and Senku sell the clothes, basically. And they now may have all the money coming to them, again, because they have the only clothes to sell and all that stuff. They do a good job. Again, he's a pretty good salesman. That's pretty, I like that. Yuzuya fits in really well with the, with the cast. I was afraid that would happen. I was afraid she wouldn't fit in. Like, to me, Taiju doesn't fit in well in this episode. She's just another, another muscle-bound, like, he goes, helps the, the uh, craft, not craft team, but the construction team, the science team, just puts stuff together. He's building the ship with the, uh, the old craftsman. But I, I just don't feel like he's just another one that does the exact same thing as, like, Magma with, with a better, better personality. 
Uh, there is one scene I want to talk about with Gen. Gen's my favorite character in the anime. Uh, she does this one scene to trick. So Gen knows that if he's just like, "Hey, we'd like you to be captain," they would have to pay him. So Senku's like, "You handle it. I, we're not gonna do that." And Gen convinces him by not giving, by not asking him to be the captain, that he and Gen becomes the one that gets the cards. So they draw cards for it. And uh, again, Gen's of course not gonna let it be random. He makes sure to control it. But the captain doesn't get it. Gen gets it. So he sells the card. Because the captain thought he was already going to be chosen and yada yada. So he sells the card to him for a, a extremely high amount of money. And Gen's just really good at this. This scene's worth going to watch by itself. I think it's really worth it. You see, in the picture, you see he's happy about getting that Joker card. That means he can go on this uh, hot air balloon. But Gen's over here didn't want it to begin with because he didn't want to do it. But he sold it to him. And it was all about them. Senku knew about it. Gen knew about it. So that, that seems probably my favorite in the anime. In uh, just that special episode. Uh, and the third one to go on it is Krom. Uh, Senku and Gen talk about who, who should be the third one on it. And he's like, we can leave it as a random choice. And he's like, Krom gives his big speech about how, he, how he's going to pull the card from Sheer Wheel. And Gen just gives it to him. I had a lot of fun. It, it's pretty. It, I like it. Gen's my favorite. He's a good guy. I was, I was worried he'd become the villain. Quote unquote villain. Like, villain as in, like, he's a good foil for the, uh, like, a rival kind of way. But it's more like he works really well with Senku, trying to accomplish the goals and uh, whatever Senku needs. While Rishiri, the captain, is more foil for Senku. Like, he just doesn't. He has his own things he wants to do, and he just works well with Senku in a different way. So I, I'm happy about that. The the storm is probably the great, best animation for the uh in the in the episode because they go in the cyber balloon, they see the sunrise. Storm, I was this really emotional moment, very touching. Uh, they have to sail to the Ishigami village after that or before that they run into a storm which they're all butting heads what to do yada yada Krom comes up to that this idea to just put it all in there and just fly above the storm uh, the, the captain uh, is trying to conquer the storm he does this I'm going to be I'm going to conquer the storm I'll be a master of this like every like other things I do uh So they make it through the storm. It's pretty nice. Uh, Senku doesn't really do too much in there, in this, uh, on the hot air balloon. But he, uh, he's there nonetheless. He's just the main character. I don't think he contributes as much as those two do. He's just a smart guy to have there. Uh, the sound for this episode is good there's one little thing that's kind of you notice it immediately um i noticed it immediately is this snap the captain has he does this snap every time he like his first introduction is his fingers snapping he he has the blue marks like the the revival marks on his finger on his fingers and he snaps he makes this sound but the sound is obviously of a snap but it sounds like it's right next to the mic Every time, even though he'll do it a far away, he'll do it close up. It always sounds the same. And I just, I get it. It's their, probably their pre-recorded snap that they have for every little instance. But it just doesn't sound, if, if I'm, t if uh, we're looking at Senku on the left side of the screen and the captain's in the back and he snaps, I don't want it to sound like he's right here, at, right next to my ear. I, I just don't like that. And But that's how it felt like I was hearing that's probably the only complaint about the sound I have. Uh, the sub is great. I have no complaints about that. The dub, I watched a few minutes in the dub. I watched all of it in the sub. I went back, watched the, probably the first three, just the play, play part, up until they get to the 
uh, the island for the capital in uh, dub just to see how it sounds if I can notice anything I don't have any complaints about it uh, of course I didn't watch it fully way through but sub itself great no no complaints at all I I want to give it a I gave season one a 7.5 out of 10 I gave the second season 7 out of 10 I, I'm going to give the, a 7 out of 10 for this season or this episode I think it does a good job of introducing the new, our new character, Nanami, the captain, and he he's not bad. He they, he works well with uh, everyone else. He works as a good foil for Senku. He works well with Chrome. He connects on the hot air balloon. He uh, he gets he's not super smart, so he's easily tricked by Gen whenever it needs to be. He is a little pompous and pretentious, but he no one needs to be perfect. Like if if they're not gonna have consistent amounts of like Sukasa villains, they need to make problems occur for conflict to happen, and he's a good way to do that. He's a rich, uh, he's a spoiled brat that just wants to own everything. At least I, that's how I see him. He's very pretentious. Uh. Yeah, my my thoughts here. I say, why would they not put this one next season? I, I of course I haven't seen next season, but it feels like it would just lead well into it. Of course, this is a fifty-five minute long special. Fifty-five minutes long, one episode. So maybe they wanted to stretch out this to be more of a. This would probably take about three to four ep three episodes, maybe four. To truly get all of it out this way they can cut a little bit of content here and there and then have uh, next season is how long is next season which is just part one of it 11 episodes and i'll be covering that next uh dark stone new world so maybe they're trying to cut it like cut certain content or make it sort of smooth the transitions to a different art without being a weird set of epi weird number of episodes uh, great episode. New faces. Uh, the new pairing of characters is really good. I am excited. So, conclusion, I just, I'm excited to see the next season. I'm excited to see the world uh, has changed. Uh, of course, someone's going to have to be un depetrified, right? There has to be conflict out there if it's not going to be an eternal like conflict. So, I'm excited to see that, how they handle that. It's 11 episodes, so I'm sure it's going to be a little bit more fast-paced than season one was, of course. I I want to know who's going to go on this trip. Because I, I don't think it's going to be a good trip. I don't think it's going to be really good if they just pack up everybody and go. Of course, I expect the main ones to be there. Senku, Chrome, the captain, of course. Uh, hopefully, Kohaku, uh, the old craftsman. He might not be there, but I expect those to be there. Taiju, Zuya. But anything past that, I, I'm not even sure all of them will be there. Only ones I know are going to be there is a, and these three and Gen. Anything past that, I don't know. And I don't think you should put. I don't think you should put all of them on that ship to go across the world, because it's going to be crowded. It's going to be. You're not going to have. You have 11 episodes to may really fill out these characters and i don't think that's a good idea and that's why also having new conflict probably new characters introduced if there's going to be more people out there in the world there could be a lot to this and it's i wonder what i want to know what goes on the ship who goes on the ship but uh, i am excited to see it i uh it's a good show you should watch it all right thank you for watching if you like what i do here Make sure to subscribe, like a video. I'm going to be posting season the next season soon, within a week from post. And I've already covered season one and two of Dark Stone. I'll also, also cover weekly episodes of uh, seasonal anime, while also covering anime news on Friday. And that, uh, thank you for watching, and have a good day.